We asked scientists and engineers to develop a device that soaks up carbon from the atmosphere. A device that would lock up CO2 for quite a long time. Of course, it would have to be environmentally friendly. It would also have to be efficient, reliable and cheap and easy to produce. Here's what they came up with. Trees and forests play a crucial role in regulating the climate. Through photosynthesis, they remove CO2 from the atmosphere, binding it and storing it as carbon. The carbon is held in the forest biomass, in the trunks, branches, foliage and roots, and in the soil. In young forests, carbon is soaked up or sequestered quickly. In mature forests, sequestration eventually equals decomposition and the carbon balance reaches a steady state. At this point, the forest does not absorb any more carbon, but it has become a vast carbon reservoir. But if the trees are destroyed, they release carbon back into the atmosphere, thus becoming a source of greenhouse gas emissions. Forests cover 4 billion hectares of the world's surface. That's almost one third of the total land area. The amount of carbon stored in these ecosystems is the equivalent of around 4,500 gigatons of CO2. That's more than the total carbon contained in the world's oil stocks, more than is contained in the atmosphere of the world itself. So it's no surprise that forests can play a big part in addressing climate change. But we are not looking after them. 8,000 years ago, half the world's land surface was covered by forest. Today, that's down to less than a third. Since 1850, deforestation has released around 120 gigatons of carbon into the atmosphere. In Australia, over the past 200 years or so, around 40% of our forests have been removed to make way for farming and grazing, roads and railway tracks, cities and towns. Wood has also been used for energy, fuel and building. Deforestation doesn't just exacerbate climate change, it affects people, particularly the world's poorest, who depend on forests for flood protection, erosion control, timber and natural medicines. Loss of forests also means loss of biodiversity. It's a grim statistic, but deforestation accounts for nearly one-fifth of the world's greenhouse gas emissions. That's more than from every car, every boat, every plane in the world. More than the whole of the transport sector put together. The good news is that governments in many countries are seeing the environmental benefits of forests and are working to restore their forest cover. Between 1990 and 2005, the forested areas of Europe grew by 13 million hectares. That's an area roughly equivalent to the size of Greece. Globally, however, the same amount is lost to deforestation every year, and tropical countries are the most vulnerable. On the other hand, Asia, which had a net loss of some 800,000 hectares a year in the 1990s, reported a net gain of 1 million hectares a year from 2000 to 2005, primarily as a result of large-scale reforestation by China. Our contribution to climate change mitigation through forest management can come about in three main ways. By conserving and managing existing forests, we can protect and maintain the carbon already locked up in them. By tackling the causes of deforestation, we can reduce the rate and amount of loss of forest cover. Of course, this also protects the ecosystem services that forests provide. By restoring the planet's forest cover through planting new forests and re-establishing those we have lost. Schemes that encourage individuals, businesses and others to offset their emissions by planting trees can be valuable but mustn't act just as a salve to our environmental conscience. Where offsetting can be valuable is when emissions can't be avoided. Another thing we can do is use more wood in our everyday lives. Wood can often be used in place of steel, aluminium, concrete or plastics that require large amounts of energy to produce. 
replacing one cubic metre of concrete or red brick with the same volume of timber can save around one tonne of carbon. Wood products are unique. They come from a natural, renewable, sustainable resource. The carbon they contain remains stored for the duration of the product's lifetime until it decays or is burnt. The longer the wood product is used, the longer the period of time the carbon is stored within it. A global increase in the use of industrial wood products could result in a significant drop in greenhouse gas emissions. Forests need to be managed using responsible forestry practices. But how do we know that our forests are being managed responsibly? Certification is the best way to prevent illegal logging and it allows us to choose responsibly sourced wood products that we know are from sustainable sources. We should be optimistic. We know what needs to be done. We need to protect what we already have. We must reduce deforestation and restore more of the world's forest cover. We should use more wood in place of other materials. Finally, we have to plan to adapt to our changing climate. If we get this right and play our full part, the world's forest sector can help to solve this global problem. Morally, we have always had an obligation to protect and manage our forests for future generations. We now have the power and the strongest possible imperative to do something. Mankind understands its predicament, has the knowledge to see what needs to be done, has the skills and the technology to do it. We now have to show we have the willpower too.